Good morning, traders. Welcome to the Asian preview and the uh, New York wrap from Privateer FX. Got the Bank of Japan coming up in a few hours. Um, anywhere three and a half, four hours time from now. It's usually about a two-hour window. <clears throat> so we will uh, we'll be listening out for them. We're not expecting a whole lot out of Kuroda and uh, and company. Most likely they'll raise their GDP forecast a bit. We don't think they'll change their CPI forecast for 2018. If they do, that, that would be quite hawkish and uh, catch the market by surprise. You take a look and see what dollar yen did here today during New York during the New York session. We had a big move up here when the government shutdown was, uh, well, we just like to say that it was kicked, they kicked the can down the road because all they've done is now extend this thing out to about February 8th and there's still a lot of uh, dissension between the parties. So you did have a little, little pop. You can see here on the hourly, this bar here from the 11080 level, we did get up to uh, 11122 as a high, and then it sold off after the fact when it was actually announced that the government reopened. So, you know, this is very similar to uh, previous times. Had really no impact. I mean, I, I guess some dollars selling on the open in Asia a lot yesterday, but overall, it was kind of an odd event. It was a very quiet day um, today during North America. For the Bank of Japan, some of the levels we're looking at here, <clears throat> downside, we have support down here at 110.50, and on the top side, 111.50. So you can see it's been very sideways since we made that 110.20 low last week. Um, if they are hawkish, expect this 110.20 to give way, and there are a lot of talk about stops below 110, the figure. So Bank of Japan will be the focus during this trading session. Um, nothing really here on the dailies. Uh, cable was had an interesting day, very strong, one of the strongest, the strongest major during uh, the entire session on the day. <clears throat> you don't usually hear that because cable's always been the pig uh, since Brexit. Well, let's take a look at the weeklies. You know, we are now, we, we broke back above that 138.60 area, which is the old low here that we broke on the Brexit. Uh, you know, we are retracing some of this, but this has got some room. Um, you know, I think if 140 goes, I don't see really why it can't stop. Um, here was the open of that day, the Brexit week, 144.60, got a 200 week moving average up here just under 144 the figure. So this still looks bullish. <clears throat> Excuse me, there was some positive news out regarding Brexit with Macron. Um, so, you know, sterling again is breaking higher. Uh, Euro sterling broke some, or is approaching now this, uh, this area here, this 86.90 level. Um, that looks like that, that, that has some room on the downside as well. Again, overall, uh, you know, the dollar was uh, under a little bit of pressure, but uh, it was not a very exciting first trading day of the week. S&P's nice move up. NASDAQ, nice move up a percent. Again, not concerned at all about U.S. government shutdown. Uh, European indices, you know, a little bit underperformed a little bit. Gold didn't do much. Get over to the crypto space. They actually had some moves. Um, Bitcoin back down. It was down. It's down about eight percent here. In the past twenty-four hours, Ethereum seven percent, Ripple almost eleven percent. Uh, as far as Bitcoin, which is the most widely followed, this nine thousand level looks really, really important. And uh, I think if we can take that out, there's no reason we can't go down to the two hundred day, which is seventy-four hundred. And Ethereum. We had that low of 760 last week, uh, 758 last week, maybe a retest of there. These would be some pretty significant pullbacks. But uh, I wouldn't be surprised 
if we did see further selling pressure in the cryptos. Uh, looking ahead at the calendar for Europe, uh, we have ZEW, and we have uh, in the U.S. we have Richmond Manufacturing. So nothing, nothing major out of uh, out of Europe or the U.S. tomorrow. The main highlight being the Bank of Japan in a few hours' time. Good luck with that. Let's hope Kuroda is pounding the drum of uh, some of these other central bankers, you know, now seeing signs of inflation and less, uh, less, less stimulus, monetary stimulus, and uh, get some moves in JGBs and some of the other global fixed income, and that, that's what we need for uh, volatility in the currency space. Keep an eye out for us on the European Open, and we will speak to you then. Good luck trading tonight. See you, folks.